right, so in this video, we're going to be talking about more about histograms. If you don't know what histograms are, uh, you should go back to the previous video I had made about what are histograms. This is going to go a little bit more deeper into what histograms are, but more so we are going to focus on the shape of data in a histogram. And how can we describe the histogram? What does it look like? Okay, we, we as humans like to describe things and what they look like, and we have some words today uh, that are going to help you along with that. If you are in my class, you are given, you are given a, a worksheet that has some guided notes. I will put a link to that on my Canvas page as well if you're watching this at home. Uh, and if you're in class, you should be filling this out as we go. We are going to cover a bunch of terms first, and on your worksheet, you're going to fill in what those shapes look like out of those histograms. So let's go ahead and start off with our first definition today. Our definition is going to be symmetric. Uh, symmetric histogram or symmetric data basically means if you were to cut a graph in half like this, it is a mirror image on both sides. So divide it at the center so that each half is a mirror image of the other. It doesn't need to be exact. As you can tell, this part right here is a little bit higher than this part over here. Uh, and so they don't need to be exact. As long as they look basically symmetric or a mirror image on both sides, then we can call it symmetric. Some key points to symmetric data is that the mean and the median are going to be the same or at least really close to being the same. It's not very often that happens, but with symmetrical data, it does happen. Our next definition is skewed left and skewed right, and it has to do with skewness. Okay, skewness, what is skew? Well, basically, that means we have data in our, we have points of data in our list of data that kind of screw up our data. Uh, it, it, like, for instance, if we have in our class a bunch of 14 year olds, they're just all 14, uh, the average would be 14. But if we got a 16-year-old into our class, that would skew the data uh, a little bit and, and bring the mean up, and that would skew it uh, to the right on the number line. Uh, so let's, let's look at these. Skewed right means that it's going to be low on the right. Skewed left means that it's going to be low on the left. So what does that mean in the context of means and averages? Well, if it's low on the right, it's skewed right, which means the mean is going to be a little bit larger than the median. Uh, that means that the mean is going to be pulled up. If it's skewed left, the histogram will be low on the left. And also, for the average or the mean, the mean is going to be uh, pulled down uh, from the median. Uh, it's going to pull that mean down. Because remember that if we have extreme values, which is what gives us skewness, uh, that's going to either pull the mean up or the mean down. So again, if we look at these two histograms, this one right here is low on the left, so this is skewed left. And this one right here is low on the right, so this one is skewed right. Very common mistake to make is to actually reverse these and say, well, this one's high on the right, so it must be skewed right. That is false. It's low on the left. That's where my extreme values are. Therefore, it's skewed left. Same thing for skewed right. It's low on the right. That's where my extreme values are, so it is skewed right. All right, here's some more shapes we can talk about. We can talk about gaps. Gaps are just when there are no data points in the distribution of the data. And then the clusters, which is what kind of makes the gaps, the clusters are these pieces right here in the histograms, the data points that are all kind of grouped together. Here's some other ones. We got peaks in data. The peaks are just like a mountain peak. Um, uh, for instance, in, in these graphs here, in these histograms anyway, we have peaks here, 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 and here. Um, this is kind of where we find our modes at. It's where the most of our data is, is sitting. And so we have some words specifically for these, and it has to do with the word mode. Uni mode uh, meaning one mode, is where there's going to be one peak, one clear peak. So for instance, this one right here is unimodal. I would also consider this one to be unimodal, but someone could argue, well, I see two peaks. And I totally get that. But I would call this one, this one right here, unimodal because it has one clear tall peak. It has one mode, not two. Bimodal means that it has two modes. Bi meaning two, 
modal meaning mode two modes so uh, this would be a perfect example right here of bimodal there are two modes there the mode would be uh, three and seven bell shaped bell shaped interesting bell shaped is has to do with the modal uh, bell shaped has one mode but it's also when the mean and the median and the mode are all going to kind of be the same uh, that means it's also got to be symmetric we talked about that earlier uh, a bell curve a bell shaped kind of comes from the word what looks like kind of like a bell i know that's a horrible bell uh, but if you think of what like the liberty bell looks like that's kind of the shape we're looking for here and that's where the bell shape comes from uh, key points about that are that if the mean uh, the median and the mode are very close to being the same or they are the same uniformity uniformity does not need to be exact so i'm going to say that first and foremost again just kind of like uh, the bell shape or the symmetric doesn't need to be exact data that is spread out equally across the range so from the minimum to the maximum then there's no clear peaks this is like the perfect example of uniformity but if all of these we're just a little bit off. All of these top pieces right here were just a little off, but it was basically the same over the top. We could still call it uniform. This right here is our bell shape. This is not uniform. This one is uniform. So recap. Well, there's a bunch of terms that we covered, right? So I'm just going to quickly go through those one more time. Uh, we had symmetric. We had skewness, which is skewed to the left if it's low on the left, skewed to the right if it's low on the right. We had gaps and clusters. We had number of peaks, unimodal, bimodal, and bell-shaped, which is also unimodal. And then we had uniformity, which is basically just the same across the top. Okay, so hopefully by now you'll be able to represent data on histograms, but also interpret the difference in shape, center, and spread. Uh, with these histograms and hopefully in our next video we can start talking about uh, what does it mean to make a histogram and then can we describe those that data from there and I will see you there